This module concerns computed tomography fundamentals. This is module 1A, which discusses how cardiac CT works. This is an overview of the CT scanner. An x-ray source sends out a series of x-rays, which are somewhat scattered and are then uh, collimated and shapened by a pre-patient collimator, usually called a bow tie filter. This reduces overall radiation dose and makes it much more uniform when the x-rays are incident upon the patient. Once the x-rays leave the patient, they are also scattered and are sent through a post-patient collimator, which also determines individual slice thickness. This information then is incident upon a detector array, which produces an analog signal from the photon energy. This information is then amplified and sent from analog to a digital converter called the Data Acquisition System, or DAS. Once this digital information is available, the data are then sent to a reconstruction computer called an array processor. Again, in review, uh, there's an X-ray tube which produces a fan-like beam of X-rays which are incident upon the detector array after passing through the patient. The X-ray source is then spun about the patient to produce data over a total of 360 degrees. Originally, single slice scanners were available, but these were totally inadequate for cardiac work. Later, multi-detector scanners, such as a four-row scanner, were produced, but these also were terribly inadequate for cardiac worse work. The first effort, 16-row scanner, was the first time we were able to actually begin to see good cardiac applications, but this was quickly replaced with the current state-of-the-art 64-row scanner. This is the z-axis coverage of the detectors in each of the major manufacturers, Siemens, Toshiba, Philips, and General Electric. The Siemens scanner is a 64 scanner that actually uses two 32 rows of detectors which are sampled twice. The coverage then is 19.2 millimeters per 32 multiplied by two producing 64 slices. Individual for the Toshiba and the Philips and GE are true 64 slice scanners. There are several basic acquisition modes for imaging using CT. Axial, sequential, or step and shoot, helical and spiral, and then specifically for cardiac imaging, ECG axial or helical prospective gating, and ECG helical retrospective gating. This shows an illustration of axial imaging. Basically, the images are acquired each time the uh, x-ray tube spins about the patient. Therefore, the images are acquired in a manner of take a picture, move the table, take a picture. The helical mode basically continues to spin uh, the camera about the patient while, while continuously moving the patient couch, thus producing information in a true helical or spiral manner, which is later on reprocessed to parallel tomographic images. For cardiac imaging, you can do prospective ECG gating, which basically turns on the camera only at a certain time during the cardiac cycle. This significantly reduces radiation exposure. It is done either in an axial or a step and shoot axial manner. The other method is a retrospective ECG gated where the camera is on the entire time as the patient table is moving in a manner to acquire spiral-like images. This produces the most radiation but also provides the most data later for reanalysis for retrospective gating. This is an overview then of the timing of performing multi-detector retrospective scanning using a 64 slice scanner. Essentially, images are acquired in an individual band, which represents the z-axis coverage of each of the 64 detectors. A single source scanner can then acquire images as noted in the previous scan. However, it still requires at least 180 degrees of scan arc to acquire a single set of images. Improvements in temporal resolution can be accomplished and are done using the Siemens dual source scanner, 
which results in twice the temporal resolution such that it only takes 90 degree rotation of each of the two heads, thus producing the individual 180 degrees required for scan reconstruction. Toshiba has recently introduced the 320 slice scanner, which acquires an entire coverage of the heart in a single rotation. This is very important because it eliminates cardiac helical overlap, which is a major, major cause of increased radiation dose from multi-detector CT scanning. Philips has also introduced a 256 slice scanner, and Siemens has introduced a 256 slice multi-detector scanner. For these newer detectors, Z-axis coverage is listed in this group, where again for the Siemens scanner, it's 128 samples, 64 detectors sampled twice, but using two individual cameras. Also, there is produced a 256 slice scanner, which is produced by Philips, and a 320 slice scanner, which is produced by Toshiba. There is a big difference in terms of the time required to acquire the images, about six to nine seconds using step and shoot or complete retrospective imaging using 64 slice scanner, where for a 256 or a 320 slice scanner, one can acquire images throughout the entire heart in approximately one to three seconds. Terms that you need to know involve the gantry. This is the sum of the x-ray apparatus and patient couch. Collimation, which is really the post-patient collimator, is basically the setting of the slice thickness. Slice thickness in traditional 64 slice scanning varies between 0.4 to 0.7 millimeters. The technologist then sets up the scanner by, first of all, determining the x-ray tube voltage, kV, or kilovolts. Typical values are 80, 100, 120, 135, and 140. Increasing the x-ray tube voltage will increase the number of x-ray photons produced per unit time. It also increases x-ray photon energy. It does decrease image noise. It decreases image contrast but it also significantly increases radiation dose. The other parameter is the tube current, milliampers, or MA. Typical values range between 50 and 400. Increasing the x-ray tube current will increase the number of x-ray photons produced per unit time, decreases image noise, but also increases radiation dose. The gantry rotation time can also be somewhat varied. Typical values range from 270, 330, 350, up to 400 milliseconds. Decreasing the gantry rotation time decreases the number of x-ray photons produced per unit time and increases image noise, but it also has the advantage of improving temporal resolution and decreasing total scan time. Pitch is the final concept which is very important specifically for cardiac imaging. This describes the table movement with respect to the gantry rotation in a helical scan. Table movement per 360 degrees of rotation divided by total nominal scan width. For a pitch of one as shown in the center, the table movement and the total nominal scan width or z-axis coverage is identical. For a typical cardiac imaging, it requires at least a pitch of 0.25 to 0.5. Therefore, as noted in the lower left here, the table movement is less than the total nominal scan width.